This is Andy Paul for ID Boxing. I'm joined by Michaela Mayer over Zoom. Michaela, always a pleasure. Happy New Year. Uh, did you get up too much over the festive period? Um, I had a good Christmas with my friends and family, but I was actually in the car with my dogs on the way to training camp for New Year's. So it takes about two days to get to Coach Al's house in Michigan from Colorado. So um, that's what I was doing, but I do it all the time. I'm used to it. That is some journey, especially through New Year's. Well, I mean, there's no exact date locked in, but I have a pretty good idea. And it's just time to start camp. <clears throat> we will come on to what is next for you very shortly. But let's just reflect on your 2022. Obviously, the high of uh, the victory guys, Jennifer Han, just go back to that for me. Please, Michaela, reflect on, on that fight. The Jennifer Han fight? Yes, please. Um. <clears throat> You know, it was it was a good fight, but it was really just it was a filler fight for me. You know, I was trying to fight the champions. And, you know, the only reason I went up against someone like Jennifer Hahn is because Baumgartner wasn't taking willing to take the fight at that time. So um, it was great. But my my goal is to constantly make big fights. And regardless of <clears throat> what happened in 2023 and the way it ended and me not getting the decision, it was still definitely a highlight of my career. It was a great, great, great card in, in general. A great time in women's boxing history. The year for women's boxing, you know, that card followed up by what Serrano and Katie Taylor did at Madison Square Garden. So um, there's a lot to be proud of, a lot to be grateful for. And I still think that it was really, really big for my career, it elevated my career. And so I just got to keep uh, keep the momentum going for 2023. One thing you have, which it seems to be a positive with the female sides of the sport, it seems to be a lot easier to make. I know you'll, you'll disagree because of how long it took to get the Baumgartner fight, but it's, it does seem a bit easier to get the bigger fights and the bigger names to face off against each other. Is that something which gives you confidence moving into this year? You'll be able to secure another big name pretty swiftly and to rebuild towards world title status. Yeah, that is something that the women are doing, I think, really well. We are making the big fights happen, and not just in our own division, but we're willing to go to different divisions and challenge the other champs, So, uh, which is something that I'm always said I'm able to do. You know, I have the height, I have the size, so I can go up to multiple divisions, and there's still a lot of really big fights for me. And we're not wasting any time. We're going to start, you know, knocking on those doors as soon as possible. I feel like I'm in my prime and there's no better time than to challenge the best than now. You mentioned that with, with your frame and your size, you could comfortably move up a few different weights. We've seen the likes of Terry Harper and Tasha Jonas move up a number of weights to become world champions at 154. Uh, for yourself, I'm not necessarily saying to go and do that, but... Uh, have you thought about how high you would go up in weight to secure your first opportunity of becoming a world champion again? Uh, my first opportunity, I won't be going that high. Eventually, one day, you know, the sky's the limit. We'll see. But for me, in order for me to be able to come back down to 135, like there's obviously I would love the Bob Gardner rematch at 130. I want Katie Taylor at 135. But if I were to jump up to 154 overnight, it'd be really, really hard for me to come back down to this weight and be and still be strong and and um, competitive. So I'm gonna do it like this, right? So I I went after 130. <clears throat> I'm going for 135 now. Uh, then 140, maybe 147. But I'm gonna move up the ladder like this and and try and take over one weight class at a time. I'm listening to you talk obviously the plan to move to 135 and Michaela I imagine the only fight you'd consider dropping back to 134 would be uh, Alicia Baumgartner so with that in mind uh, <clears throat> what kind of a time frame you have on that as to how feel how long you feel you could potentially drop back down in weight for it listen that's a that's a rematch that everyone wants to see I think it's going to be huge and I think it's a rivalry that we really, really have to continue to capitalize on, maybe a trilogy. I think it's great for the sport, not just for my career but or for her career, which it is, but for the sport in general. So that is the only fight that I would go back down to 134. Um, other than that, I, I feel like I've cleared out that division. I fought everyone that I needed to, 17 fights there, so or 18 fights. Um, however, if it takes too long, my body might just say, no, it's not happening. 
you know, because like I said, I, I don't just want to tackle 130. I think there's other fights for me too, or 135, 140. And so we'll, we'll see how long she takes. I know she's playing this whole, this ego game of the cards are in, you know, her favor and she can play how she wants to play and do what she wants to do. And she's right. Fine. But just lose the ego and, and fight or don't fight, do it for the fans or don't do it. But um, you know, I'm not going to sit around and wait forever. And if she wants to do that, then I may not be available when the time comes. Um, I understand that she wants to go undisputed. I have never, ever once said, I think that it's stupid for her to go undisputed before rematching me. I've always said, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. I would probably do the same, but I, I wouldn't shut down a rematch. I think that after you go undisputed, which I believe she will, um, that I am the next big fight for her. So we'll see. Hopefully that she doesn't take too long because I... I've always been about the fans and I want to be able to give them that rematch. I didn't intend on kind of going about the interview this manner, but as we've come on to Alicia earlier than I'd expected, um, what have you made of her most recent comments? If you've seen them today, Michaela, so she did an interview with Sky Sports and she's again, your, your names banded together. And she said, you're still in denial. You're still bitter. When you take a loss, you take that loss, you move forward and you grow from it. Uh, that's kind of a gist as what, as to what she had to say. Just your thoughts on that. That's her opinion. That's how she wants to go about her life. Fine. But, I don't think I lost the fight and I want the rematch and I'm competitive and that's, that's what I want. And that's what I'm going to go for at the same, at the end of the day, I have moved on. I'm moving on. I'm, I have a fight set against a top contender I'm moving up to 135. The only thing I'm saying is the fans still want that fight and the rivalry is still very much alive. So let's give it to them. Why not? Like that's what I'm in this business for fighting the best and giving fans the best fight. So um, she can take it how she wants it saying that I'm uh you know, need some humble pie. I think that we're both maybe not the the most humble people in the game, me and her both. Who cares? You know, we didn't get to, we didn't get to this rivalry by being humble. So uh, you know, it is what it is. It's just it's entertainment at the end of the day. I obviously imagine it's slightly frustrating, but at the same time, this rivalry which is building, Michaela, as you said, it's what the sport needs uh, across any, whether it men, whether it's men or women. And I posed the question to Alicia when I saw her in Phoenix, is there potential there for a potential trilogy that you've mentioned yourself? How big could that be between a pair of you if you were to go down that route? It would it would be huge, or massive. I, I'm trying not to say the word massive because you guys, all you Brits say massive all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, but it would be massive. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that because she didn't have a lot of attention on her career before this fight with me, that it was like overnight she had, she came into this big world title fight and there was just all this attention. Women's boxing was at this new level and <clears throat> she really just got like a, a, a lot of attention overnight and a lot of big, you know, big taste of, of, of whatever. She got a lot of attention overnight, but that's not, so maybe she thinks that it's normal. Maybe she thinks that's going to be the case for every single fight, but it's not necessarily. I value this rivalry we have because I know how rare it is and how, how big it is. So for me, just being the businesswoman that I am, I would milk it for all it's worth. I think that she might need a little bit of time to to realize just how unique what we have is and um when she does i know that she'll come knocking her or eddie because i know eddie sees it all the signs of this fight but uh like i said i hope it happens sooner sooner than later because uh she's not the only big fight for me and i got i got a lot of other things that i want to accomplish you saw each other in phoenix last year michaela where i bumped into you myself and we saw the, the gifts were exchanged between the pair of you what did you take away from that brief encounter that the rivalry is still alive just what i've been saying um and the, that's one of the reasons why i did show up it has a matchroom card i know very well that uh if we were to do a rematch that rightfully so it would be with matchroom or on an eddie hearn show and so um i just wanted to show up and remind him of what he has in his back pocket and not to take too long to to whip it out and use it because uh yeah it's exciting and I'm just I'm just having fun, honestly. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm having fun. It was obviously very, very hard for me to to accept the loss and get over it. And I was going through a roller coaster of emotions, just like any champion, any competitive champion would. But you know, I'm not bitter. I, it is what it is, and I'm just gonna keep going and keep making big fights and um yeah, just do what I do best and 
she might not like me, but I don't really like her either. One day we can, we can, uh, you know, hug it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what, um, obviously we know that she's fighting in early February Michaela with that in mind will, I know you're in camp but will you be looking to go to the show no I will not be at the show I'll be snapped in the middle of training camp for myself so um, <clears throat> you know I'll be tuned in it's a great card for women's boxing uh, a lot of good young talent on there and it's just once again we're proving that we can hold our own carry it to, for them to carry a show at the uh hulu theater msg um for match room to to support that believe in that you know the same as your know, top ranking boxer did and um again with taylor serrano it's just back to back to back we're proving that that we can hold our own so uh, my own ego aside it's great for the sport and i'll definitely be tuned in those two fights in particular i want to touch on being firstly you know alicia's undisputed fight what do you make of it how does that one play out interesting undisputed isn't it because uh technically she's going up against someone who's not a champion um but i understand because Choi is so impossibly hard to get a fight with we've all tried and we kind of had to or i'm sure they had to pull some strings and get something done because she's just impossible i really believe the wa should just strip her you know she's been avoiding fights for this long i believe she's faking an injury i don't think she's really injured i think that maybe she has some big sponsors in her country and in order to keep that money coming in she needs that belt but she doesn't really want to fight and defend it so i think the wba needs to really step in and strip her um but you know the, the second best option would have been Meg Holland or Pursun. I believe it should have been Pursun. Pursun did beat Meg Holland earlier this year, so it would have made more sense for that. Um, but, you know, I'm sure they didn't want Pursun. So they went with Meg Holland, and, you know, she's a good fighter. You know, we'll see. I I don't know. I think that the odds are probably in Baumgartner's favor. Um, but I haven't watched much of Meg Holland, and we don't know how hungry she is. So we'll see it all play out. Of course, you've got another undisputed bout between uh, Amanda Serrano and Erica Cruz. Again, your take, please, Michaela. Uh, so I haven't watched a ton of Erica Cruz, to be honest. I I have been planning to go in there and kind of, you know, weigh the odds and see what's going on. But obviously, off the top of my head, Serrano's been at the top of her game. She's a very competitive, very strong opponent to go up against. So, um but I don't want to give a solid answer until I do my research on Cruz. That's fair enough, Michaela. I will touch back, uh, touch base again, uh, close to the fight. Then hopefully you'll know a little bit more for me. And before we kind of end this, come back to yourself. You mentioned a certain Katie Taylor earlier. How far off do you feel you would be from a potential fight with her? Because she's the one name, everybody around the 130 to what 140 division is being linked mm -hmm. with her at the minute. Yeah, I know. I understand that. Um, it's been something I've been wanting for a while. Uh, but, you know, I I didn't come into the 135 division, division with my belts. So in my mind, I have to establish myself at this weight class a little bit. I don't know how long that's going to take. Uh, I think it's a combination of whether or not it's something that Katie's open to doing. If Katie's open to making this fight happen, I think it could probably happen a little bit sooner, but I don't know where her head's at with that. I don't know who she wants to fight next. And she obviously has the right to choose at this point in her career. So we'll see what she wants. It could probably happen sooner if she was on board with it. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to take a few fights at one. I have three fight contract this year. So three fights at 135 and just continue to, you know, try and make a name here at this division and get that fight. Uh, maybe as mandatory, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's a lot of talk about her fighting at Croke Park uh, over in Ireland uh, in the summer, Michaela. Uh, that fight was being banded about was with Amanda Serrano. Again, depends on how the Erica Cruz fight goes. But with that in mind, do you feel like you're in the running at all? Have you had discussions with your teams about potentially being the one opposite her uh, combat fight when it does happen? I'm sorry, what was that second half that you said? <laughs> Do you feel like when the time comes and she is in the ring and he is at Croke Park, you could be the woman in the opposite corner to her? Um, glad I would gladly be. I really would. I know that her and Serrano have a rematch clause and they should be fighting. But if for some reason it doesn't happen, I'm here. I'm available. Give me a call. Uh, I I fully understand where what she's done for this sport and that she... Uh, 
is worthy of having her next fight in her hometown in Crow Park. And maybe a lot of fighters don't want to go up and put themselves in that position, but y'all know me. I really don't care. So uh, I'll be there. I'll be there if she if I'm called upon. All right, Mikhail, as always, it's a pleasure. I'm going to leave a final word to yourself. Is there anything you'd like to leave on ahead of what will hopefully be an action-packed and exciting 2023 for you? In fact, no, we won't leave it there because I've forgotten to bring up the fight which has been mentioned with yourself. <laughs> Christina Leonardo <laughs> 2. Almost I was going to say. Yeah. Um, Christina Leonardo 2, Michaela. That's the fight which has been mentioned. Is it the case? You two show me ring next. Yes, I, I can confirm that that fight has been done. <clears throat> um, you know, I wanted to continue to make big fights with quality opponents. And this is my debut at 135. Christina Leonardo too, uh, is has been very competitive. She went up, fought, fought against Katie Taylor. Um, she beat Baumgartner uh, like a year or so back, a couple of years back. So, uh you know, she has the experience, she's a strong, tough opponent, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for top quality opponent. So uh looking forward to that fight. She's a comer, she's an aggressive fighter, and that's that's my favorite. That's what I like. So it's just it's definitely gonna be an action packed fight. Um I know I said that a little bit about Baumgartner too, but Baumgartner just likes to box and move and circle around the ring looking for a right hand but that's not Leonardo 2's case Leonardo 2 is going to come and she's going to come to entertain she's going to come to fight so um no doubt about that it'll be exciting you just mentioned kind of what she's done previously with that in mind you feel like there's a pressure to ensure you not only win but you look good doing so to really stamp your mark on the 135 division oh yeah there's definitely uh I'm not so much worried about looking good because I'm just feeling like I'm really in my prime and I feel like I'm just really confident in how and my skills right now and I know I can let my hands go I know I have a high work rate so I I think I'm Leonardo is a good match for me there um but yeah I gotta win I gotta win and there's that's that's definitely you know a thought there's no there's no I have my strike my one strike, whether I agree with it or not, it happened. It's in the books. And so um, I don't need any more strikes. I need to continue to, if I want to be able to recover from this and, and get my belts back, whether whatever division it is, I have to go in there. I have to win. I have to look good. Yeah. All right, so now, Michaela, we can leave it there. I had every intention of bringing uh, Christina up at the beginning, but the uh, interview ends up going backwards, but we got there in the end. Uh, always a pleasure, though. So, yeah, final word to yourself. Anything you'd like to leave on? Um, just stay tuned. I should be announcing uh, where this fight is. You know, we there's two options of what where this fight could be and when right now. And I'm really hoping for option one. It's going to be really great, really exciting. Um, can we can we get those options out of you? No, I don't think I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I can tell you this. One will be on your side of the pond and one is over here in America. I can say that. So uh, I should be able, I should be finding out the date and location sometime next week. I'll let you guys all know. I'm sure it'll be announced everywhere. But uh, yeah, like I said, hoping for option one. Well, Mikhail, I'm sure if it does happen over here, you'll be welcomed back with open arms and it'll be good to see you again. So we'll leave it there. And thank you for speaking to me and ID Boxing. Thank you. Talk soon. <laughs>